Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Liana Leonov and I'm the founder and president of the Global Positive Health Institute and this is our GPHI podcast series where we discuss all the topics around positive psychology, lifestyle medicine, health and healthcare, how we can incorporate it into our lives and into our practices. And, and uh, today I'm delighted to have as our guest Dr. Sheila Nambiar. She's an obstetrician gynecologist in clinical practice, but also board certified in lifestyle medicine, a fitness consultant. Uh, she's the immediate past president of the Indian Society of Lifestyle Medicine, and also uh, a council member for the GPHI. So welcome, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. It's been my greatest pleasure being on the podcast with you. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, tell us what drew your attention to lifestyle medicine, positive psychology? Uh, uh, we don't generally get exposed to that in medical school. Now, now there is more, but uh, you know, when we were in school, this was not heard of. Uh, how did you not get interested? Yeah, not at all. Um, I think it was a combination of life experiences and my observations in my clinical practice, Liana, because uh, when I started my practice three decades ago, the one thing I noticed was that there were a lot of questions that were unanswered for my, with my patients. While they came with specific problems, uh, their health did not necessarily improve, meaning to say that the symptoms may have gone away, but their state of health, state of mind did not necessarily improve. And there was more to it than just treating symptoms. And uh, being an athlete from a very young age, uh, I started incorporating fitness. For me, it started with fitness. So I started incorporating fitness into my uh, clinical practice by prescribing exercise. And, you know, and I started teaching exercise after certifying to be a personal trainer. And um, from there, you know, I noticed the both the physiological, the physical, as well as the mental and emotional changes that women experienced when they exercised on a regular basis. And there's enough and more research on that. And um, interestingly, it was also my deep interest in the uh, philosophy of modern stoicism, which as you know, is connected very closely to CBT and positive psychology. And when I discovered that, uh, you know, there was this conference in, um, was it in Taipei? Yeah, I think it was the first uh, lifestyle med Asian uh, lifestyle medicine conference in Taiwan. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know there was a field like lifestyle medicine, which actually brings together everything that I've been uh, passionate about and I went running off to Taiwan and attended the conference and then to Manila and attended the other one and there we were exposed to positive psychology and um, I've been deeply interested in the human mind and the workings of the human mind so when I heard about positive psychology I was like this is exactly what what it is you know those unanswered questions um, about improving health and not just the mere absence of disease. This is what it is, thriving instead of languishing and positive health as you and Martin Seligman have been talking about. Um, I felt that this is the gap. This is the thing that fills that gap, uh, both positive psychology and lifestyle medicine. And um, there was no looking back uh, after that. Yeah, well, you've been a passionate supporter. So thank you very much yes. as uh, the Global Positive Health Institute is putting together this positive health course so yes. that we can jointly through our passion uh, really yes. spread the word to our colleagues uh, because it's also very important for our personal well-being as well as in Absolutely. our clinical practice. And so yeah. along those lines, how do you use uh, the, this knowledge and these skills and habits for yourself and in clinical practice? Yeah, I found the um, the VIA strength survey, identifying top five strengths, I found that very, very useful because it kind of gives you a guiding, uh, you know, a, a guideline as to how to develop, in what direction to develop, not just your top five strengths, but your lowest strengths as well. When you look at those and then how to improve that as well. I think that's a very, very useful tool. Exercise for me is my go-to because it instantly lifts my mood. And, you know, I every, every form of exercise, whether it's yoga or running or strength training, and I'm a huge proponent of strength training. So for me, exercise, um, practicing gratitude, which I think is really a 
part of it. You don't have to do that as a separate thing. It's just part of life. You are grateful. And I'm really, really grateful for many, many things in my life because while we've all had hardships, especially COVID uh, in the recent past, I think we have so much to be grateful for. We are privileged, you know, uh, compared to many, many people. So gratitude, exercise, um, strengths, using your strengths, and mindfulness, the application of mindfulness on a day-to-day -day basis. These would be my top um, choices. And, and uh, some of these practices don't take any extra time. It's really- Not at all. Where we pay, our, pay attention. And uh, yeah. we can go throughout our day with more of a mindful and uh, grateful mindset and it can make all the difference. Yes, absolutely. 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 And then how do you how are you incorporating it with your patients and in your clinical care? Yeah, as I as I've already said, exercise is very much a part of my uh, prescription. And one of the things that I do, Liana, is to ask the question instead of asking what is the matter with you, the question what matters to you is, you know, I I don't know where I read that and I thought that was so profound, you know, that's something that is so meaningful and it also gets the patient thinking, you know, and uh, they they uh, many of them come to me not with gynecological and obstetric issues. Many of them come for weight loss. Many of them come with, you know, how do you deal with polycystic ovaries, which are all connected, you know, there are metabolic diseases. So, and when you delve into the history and talk to them about what matters to them, you come to so many very, very interesting conclusions and help the patient grow, not just by eliminating symptoms, but by growing as people. So in my practice, I definitely do include strengths, um, you know, encourage them to uh, do the strength finders, encourage them to have a journal. Journaling is, you know, it's profoundly uh, life-changing because very often we forget what we've done and we forget where we came from. You know, the improvements that have occurred over the last couple of months, we tend to forget it. So journaling and writing out even something simple like your daily dialogue. So that is a very important aspect. And I do introduce them to meditation and uh, regular exercise, both yoga as well as strength training and cardio. And um, what else? Um, we do regular reviews in uh, group settings. Uh, like like a shared medical appointment, because that I find is really, uh, it kind of brings an, a different kind of energy to the whole thing rather than just a one-on-one -on -one with the patient because there is input from everybody else and there is a camaraderie and they feel like, oh, we're all in this together, et cetera. So I do that too. So some of the main things would be, of course, starting with exercise and diet, and then we, I, you know, we have to address sleep, Stress is a huge, huge thing, uh, you know, and then um, I think one of the most important aspects of um, uh, uh, a meaningful and healthy life is our relationships. And invariably, when we talk about the relationships and I ask questions, all kinds of things come up. And, uh, you know, just improving a relationship that's of value to somebody. Um, maybe they don't know how to improve it. Maybe they don't know how to deal with the issues. Just helping them do that, you can see the difference in them, in how they grow and how they blossom and how they're able to apply everything else. They're able to exercise better, uh, eat better, sleep better. So it's, it's, I think it's all inclusive. It has to be all inclusive. You know, one doesn't, um, one is not better than the other. It's just that we have to, uh, of course, we have to address different things at different times because not all of us can do everything at all times. You know, <laughs> sometimes you don't get to eat well and exercise. You do either or, uh, but that's okay. As long as you know where you're going and you're mindful about it, um, that, that kind of works. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly echo the uh, importance of what I call a comprehensive, healthy, and happy lifestyle. And, uh, and of course, the behavior change is one of our biggest struggles for yeah. all of us, especially as we get busy. Uh, and, and in the GPHI, yeah. we've been writing and talking about how sometimes uh, the place to start really is more with these 
positive psychology types of activities and habits where mm -hmm. we can feel better, uh, feel a little more energetic, and then that uh, drives the other behavior changes. Because for some people, mm -hmm. like you're, uh, you love fitness, but for some people that may be asking a lot. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and so helping them find a, a place to start. And exactly. oftentimes it's, well, what makes you feel better? What yeah. makes you happier? Everybody wants to be happy. Yeah. And then yeah. as they start to do those healthy behaviors to also pay attention to the positive feelings that they're having either during, or like you said, uh, you know, you get that immediate uh, up feeling when you're exercising any form yeah. of exercise that they can really savor that, pay attention to that. And mm -hmm. then they'll just naturally want to do those yeah. healthy behaviors again. Uh, yeah. So uh, this, it, like you said, it's very uh, all connected and in integral mm -hmm. together. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And, yes. Uh, and, and, and you know, it exercise have to be, yeah. Sure. Exercise doesn't have to be strenuous right away. It doesn't have to be the most difficult thing. It could be something you enjoy, like dancing, maybe. Maybe, you know, that speaks to you. Music speaks to you. And it could be that, you know, and then build on that as you go along. So, uh, like you said, you can start at a place that you are comfortable, whoever the patient is, and then work from there because there are so many tools that positive psychology offers us. You can choose any one of them from the toolkit and then uh, take it from there. You know, so yeah, the choices are multiple. That's, uh, that's terrific advice. Uh, any other tips you might share with colleagues who are interested in doing more of this that maybe haven't done so much and they're wondering, boy, uh, where do I start? Or maybe patients yeah. may be difficult to work with because this is asking yeah. a lot of our patients. Uh, what advice yeah. do you have? Yeah, um, I think, you know, Liana, if uh, probably lifestyle medicine is the only field that uh, emphasizes the need for the physician to walk the talk. You know, you don't, as a cardiologist, you don't need to get, have a heart attack to be, to, 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 to treat a heart attack. As an obstetrician, you don't need to have a baby to deliver a baby. But in LM, you do need to practice the uh, pillars of lifestyle medicine. And I think when you start to do that, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to be 100% in all the pillars. But when you start to do that, uh, two things happen. Of course, you do, uh, you know, the positive emotions, the, uh, the physiological changes, all of that comes about. But you also realize the difficulty in trying to, you know, stay, stay on course. And that makes one more empathetic towards the patient that you're trying to advise. So it works both ways. And I think it's really important that all uh, practitioners, physicians of lifestyle medicine definitely do practice it. And I think... Uh, starting small with just asking the right questions, even the just questions, open-ended questions like the diet, a dietary call, or how often do you exercise? And the, these are simple questions that don't take too much time. And then set aside that if the patient is more inclined to uh, follow up on those lines, set aside some more time to do a more extensive consultation. Because I know, especially in India, uh, we do have, we are very limited uh, in time where we, when we deal with patients, it's barely 15, 20 minutes, and you don't really get much in that time. But I think we do need to um, spend a little time by collaborating with, let's say, a psychologist, uh, a physiotherapist, a dietitian, so that we can, it can be a team effort. It, I don't think it can be done alone. So it, it needs to be a team effort. And um, and set aside those patients who are willing to go the extra mile, uh, set aside more time for them, have them come back for reviews. And like I said, the shared medical appointments are really useful because it covers many people and um, one is able to cover a lot of ground in that one hour because you would be spending about an hour with maybe 10, 15 people. And I did that a lot with my antenatal and postnatal patients, you know, uh, while teaching them antenatal postnatal exercises, we would also troubleshoot and talk about their problems. And it was a very, very invigorating, they were very invigorating sessions. So that would be, could be one way to go. And, um, and the other thing I think, Liana, is that, um, 
coming from a collectivist culture myself, I think we need to be a bit nuanced in our approach, even while using positive psychology, because um, for instance, the relationships mean something slightly different here, the way we live in joint families and so on. So we need to keep those things in mind when we talk about, when we use the positive psychology tools as well. I think the cultural nuances need to be kept in mind uh, by the practitioners, depending on where they live and where they practice. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. And uh, we've talked about that at the yeah. DPHI and we had a, a wonderful talk uh, by uh, Dr. Gina Duncan on uh, just the cultural uh, differences mm -hmm. and how we approach a healthy lifestyle, uh, how we define happiness and all the components mm -hmm. uh, that go there. And particularly, as you mentioned, the differences of uh, the collectivist viewpoint versus an individualistic viewpoint right. and um, helping uh, our our patients to embrace going forward in a way that is, is really more culturally meaningful to them is, is mm -hmm. absolutely part of that. Yeah. And you've been um, a leader in lifestyle medicine and now with the GPHI on our council on in positive psychology and healthcare, uh, and you're working in, in India and of course helping us globally. How do you see our success as we as this movement uh, grows. Uh, what's your vision for uh, ultimately where we're headed with this? Liana, if you ask me, I think both lifestyle medicine and positive psychology and positive health, which you've been promoting, really has to be center stage of healthcare. I think. Uh, uh, I mean, while I know that all physicians cannot become lifestyle medicine physicians, they don't have the time or the bandwidth for it. I think there is a place for uh, for lifestyle medicine in every specialty, every specialty. It's not a specialization, it's a generalization, if you ask me. So every specialty needs to include uh, lifestyle medicine and positive psychology is such a simple and effective tool and the concept of positive health, where it's not just about treating symptoms or the disease, and it's not just getting a person from minus one or two to zero, but to get them to thrive, should be a concept that I think all of us, not just for our patients, but for ourselves as well. I think that's something that we need to embrace. And I think it's heading there because people are also becoming more and more aware of these things and they don't just want to be uh, free from disease they want to be better they want to thrive you know so I think we're getting there slowly but surely we're definitely getting there it has to take center stage and it will well I appreciate your optimism that's the positive psychology way yes. and I, I yes. agree we're making yes. progress um, yeah what are some of your uh, favorite resources uh, that, that are your, your go-to's that uh, our audience might be interested in checking out for themselves yeah there are a lot there are many uh, very interesting podcasts that i was you know talking to you about of course you have we have our your podcast the uh, wphi podcast both youtube as well as on uh, um, uh, it's on apple podcasts isn't it spotify Apple Podcasts and all of that. And there are other positive psychology uh, podcasts like the one by um, Tal Ben uh, Sahar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing oh, his Shahar. happiness yeah. studies. Yeah, Shahar. And Laurie Santos has a good one. Yeah. Happiness Lab, I think it's called. Um, and then if you like apps for meditation, you have your Calm and um, Headspace and uh, books like yours. Uh, you know, the strengths in the mirror, which I loved and roots of positive change. I think those are really, really inspirational. Um, I've written three books on fitness, uh, which for the lay person, and that would be useful, especially if you're a beginner and you're just looking at, um, you know, how to approach fitness. And there are other really beautiful books, the one by uh, Positivity, was it by Barbara Fredrickson? Uh, Angela yeah. Pos yeah, positivity ratio, yeah, yeah. And uh, Grit, um, then there's another one by Donald Robertson called Resilience, which is really, really good. Um, 
uh, what else? There's so many books that are really interesting. And there is the positivepsychology.com website, which also has some amazing resources. So uh, there is a lot available there for both practitioners as well as lay people to, uh, you know, to uh, look at. Of course, the VR Strength Survey and the, the, the uh, AuthenticHappiness.org website, those are also very useful. Um, there are a whole lot, uh, Liana, and I think if you just explore it, there's, it's like, you know, a treasure trove of, uh, <laughs> I love learning. Love for learning is one of my top strengths. So it's really exciting when I, <laughs> you know, see one of these uh, websites or articles. Yeah. Well, some of those we have on our resources list on our website uh, and some of those that you've just mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm being reminded we'll add to our website as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have growing, mm -hmm. like you said, there are many and growing and yes. uh, we pride ourselves in packaging all that for our health profession audience, especially, so they can yes. use it for themselves and, and uh, write prescriptions even for these kinds of uh, resources for their patients. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, bibliotherapy is good therapy as well as now yeah. podcast therapy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Listening to a podcast is my favorite pastime when I'm walking, you know, go for my early morning walks. I love to listen to podcasts and, you know, just get that little bit of inspiration early in the morning. And uh, the, the, your podcast is one of the few, one of the many that I listen to and enjoy completely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sheila, for joining us. And yeah. as we close our, our brief uh, interview here, any words of advice or wisdom that you'd like our audience um, to keep in mind? Yeah, I think, Liana, all of us, um, I think the recognition that um, behavioral change, which is what we are looking at, is, is not easy at all. It's really, it's hard, but it's all about uh, mindset. And uh, while some of us may be blessed with that kind of um, mindset, which allows us to get into something and see it through and, you know, whether it's losing weight or getting, you know, other positive lifestyle habits, uh, we can develop the gro growth mindset and we can, it can happen over a period of time. So I think the most important thing is our mindset. And if we go into something with the right mindset, with the right, in, which is one of the reasons I love to listen to podcasts, because it puts you in the mindset of positivity and resilience, and you feel you can do it. You know, you may be having a really kind of, you know, iffy day with all kinds of problems. And you listen to one of these inspirational podcasts, and you really set yourself up for a positive rest of the day. So I think mindset is most important and um, a growth mindset is very possible. And I think every person, every human being, uh, it's their birthright to thrive. So we must try and achieve that. Well said. Well, thank you uh, again, uh, Sheila. Um, thank you. Uh, thank Dr. You. Sheila Nambiar, uh, who's joining yeah. us today at our GPHI podcast. And thank you to our listeners for joining. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. I'll love to see you again on one of these podcasts. And in the meantime, be safe, be well, be happy. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.